Inoculating biochar isn't complicated, nor is there some special formula that you need to follow. But if you're going to be using it as a direct soil amendment, it's very advisable that you preload it or you inoculate it prior to use. In this video, I'm going to talk about the how and the why. Uninoculated biochar can initially have the effect of pulling nutrients away from the plants that you're trying to grow. So it's very important that you precharge this material. Think of this freshly made piece of biochar like a dry kitchen sponge. It's going to want to take in all the moisture and all of the nutrients surrounding it. The problem with that and why this won't be able to do that is because this is hydrophobic, meaning it's going to repel water. It's hydrophobic because during the cooling process, tars and resins are going to solidify on this material, making it hydrophobic. Before inoculation can occur, you need to first remove those hydrophobic properties. I think one of the best ways to approach this entire process is through passive means. There's a couple of different things that I do that, coupled with the addition of time, allow me to be very hands-off with respect to not only removing the hydrophobic properties, but inoculating the char itself. Let me show you. This is some char that's been resting in this livestock watering trough for upwards of two weeks at this point. You can see that it's starting to draw in a lot of the, the algae and it'll also draw in the nutrient from this water trough. I'll crush it down. This will wind up being put into my compost yard where it will further undergo more inoculation. And eventually it will make its way into my garden beds or planting spaces. Another way to passively inoculate your char is by directly adding it to livestock bedding areas in the form of a deep mulch type system. Hey man. I add probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about five gallons per week to this area. So there's always material coming in, but there's always material on its way out. So if I were to dig down in here a little ways, that's their spot where they do their business. And then all of that biochar has an opportunity to absorb the odor. It's also working toward being inoculated by the pigs using the bathroom over in this section. Another very effective way to passively inoculate your char is by adding it directly to your chicken coops in the areas where your chickens roost, where they're going to produce a large amount of their manure. And it's going to help to really cut down on the odor, but it's also going to begin the inoculation process. And then this eventually will be just taken out and added directly to the compost yard. One of my favorite ways to inoculate char is by adding it directly to the compost. Untreated raw char and over the passage of time, it's going to naturally have those tendencies broken down and it's going to start to absorb all the fertility and the nutrients from this compost. I think it's worth noting that the water that you're using should be non-chlorinated. And if you can obtain it from a source that's had aquatic life living in it, whether that be a livestock watering trough or a pond nearby, all the better. You may not have access to some of the homestead options that I've just shared with you. However, here's a list of some of the inoculants, and it's not a complete list by any stretch of the imagination, but these are some of the inoculants that you may wind up considering for charging up your own biochar. I'm gonna go ahead and crush this down and then add it directly to my compost tea brew. Now there's a myriad of different ways that you can go about doing this. I could take and suspend that material and leave it in there for a couple of days. You can get very creative with it, use things like a burlap sack, a paint strainer, a pillowcase. So you're really only limited by your own imagination. I'm going to crush it down in a livestock feeding tub utilizing this tamper. And then I'm going to add that directly to my compost tea brew, which is about 55 gallons worth. Here's all that char that I just crushed out of the water trough. And I've got this down to what I think's a decent enough size. I like to get it as small as I can there's some chart, larger chunks in there, you know, three, three quarters of an inch or so, but I like to get it three eighths or less. The smaller the char is, 
the quicker that that process is going to be accelerated. If I were to take a piece of char this size and stick it in water, it's going to take a long time for the water to actually work its way in. But if I were to crush this down to a smaller size, the process is going to be accelerated. And in this case, you can see this is almost the consistency of like ready mix of concrete that you'd be mixing in your wheelbarrow. And this is all just from the water that this is absorbed. I'm going to be putting this into compost tea and adding it directly to 55 gallons. Another way that I like to crush it, and in my opinion, it's the best way to crush it because it's a passive means, is just putting it in the areas where your livestock is going to be frequenting. And by the fact that they're just walking over the top of it, they will naturally crush it down for you to an appropriate size. There's many different ways to inoculate biochar and many different variables which will determine how long it will take. But just remember this, the first step in the process is changing the properties of the char from being hydrophobic to hydrophilic. And the best way to do that is by exposing it to water. That can either be done with just plain water or with the inoculant already added. Sounds like Rice Krispies. This process can either be very hands-on or approached more passively. But just remember that Building soil is a process of patience and time, and biochar is a long-term solution. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.